Good afternoon and welcome to the Northwest Province where the business end of the dry season has begun here at Madikwe Game Reserve. <laughs> We're having a wonderful time here with some elephants. My name is James Hendry. Hello. There's my winning smile. We've got Johanna on camera. There's his thumb. He's just moving bits and pieces around on the camera. And we'll go back to these magnificent elephants who are enjoying a very pleasant time. Sorry about that. Very pleasant time in the mud. As I said, it's pretty warm out here. About 27 or 28 degrees, I'd have said, which is around about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Good. Hello, Izzy. You say you've got your cuppa and you're jumping on board, ready for the sunset safari. Good news. There's just one slight negative, I suppose, about this particular sighting, in that if this mud gets thick and deep enough, young animals or young elephants could find themselves mired. And you really don't want that because it can get very sticky in this mud. I don't think these guys are about to experience that though. They come from Pinda and a lot of these reserves will swap animals. So Madikwe might send a cheetah down to Samara, Samara in the Karoo might send one up to Pinda, Pinda will send them here, and that's so all the genetics are mixed up nicely, and that keeps the population strong. And you'll probably find that uh, they do the same with lions. In fact, I know they do the same with lions. In this particular area, I suppose effluent from platinum mines could make its way into this river into the Marika River. But I think that the catchment is sufficiently far. Oh, here's the cheetah, right here. Right here. The others behind him. Um, and the other one, and the elephant behind them, and the vehicles. Sorry, we just, we can't move now. Oh, this is amazing. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Those cheetahs made a rather catastrophic error of judgment for two animals who have lived in this area for that long. <laughs> That's the one at the water. There's the one at the water, there we go. <laughs> Females, they're going in their own direction. The rest of the elephant, we realized they're going behind the dam wall and headed east. But you know that the elephant, in most cases, they rely on the communication. So good mothers still give time for the youngster to uh, really cool down wallowing and make sure that uh, they are happy to move before they decide to, to go. Because most cases, the youngster get tired before the mom. The mom has to give them more time for them to wallow drinking and make sure that uh, the distance that they're going to take, they're going to handle because it will be maybe a long night before they get back into the water. We were waiting for this to happen. Oh, uh, elephant are coming down. What are uh, we going to witness? Maybe these elephants are going to sink, but uh, I doubt. You can see most of them, they've covered themselves with mud. It's in the nature of an elephant, it is too hot. What they do, they put extra layer in the, I mean, uh, in on top of the skin in order to move in the air without getting hurt by the sun. I believe we'll enjoy this uh, hyena here and later on we'll be able to move very close and able to uh, see if we, man if we can manage to get uh, this sighting in a very close range. You see that that is not a subadult, it looks like an adult hyena. You look at the coloration of the hyena, it's the brown dark looking colors 
and it looked like uh, it could be a little bit older than the hyena that we saw the other day. Um, I'm just checking out if I'm not still watching him from down below. Um, he <laughs> kind of keeps looking over there. It's exactly where the Franklins were and where his tracks were and where I was um, when I saw that movement. So I was just taking it easy and kind of just having a look. He's yawning a little bit, so I think he might start walking just now. Uh, I was hoping he would just lie down for a while because it's really difficult in here. I don't know how long we'll keep him if he does start to walk. Isn't that cool? There's another one off to the right. And I must confess I actually called this one in with my whistle. He thinks that I am an owl. <laughs> this is the only bird that I know of that will respond to a human whistle that is so easily conned. We're still with our wildcat. We got a little bit closer to it now. You can see it's kind of much more detailed than what we had just now. Um, it was actually sniffing that little branch and having a, a little rub up on it. So. Often with cats, they have these little preorbital glands, so quite common to watch a cat do that. And you can see those little black sort of bars on the tail, and then the black tip, very, very typical of wild cats. Um, and then they get those little stripy legs. But it's busy hunting, so looking for any little sign of any gerbils or anything like that. Um, those are the kind of things that they really love the most. The more we find it, the more relaxed it will get. And the more used to our presence in a car. This is one of the best wildcat sightings I've had um, in my time as a guide in terms of longevity. Very, very cool. You can see those long legs that I was talking about earlier as well when it's standing up like this. Anyway, it's that time though for us to say goodbye. And what a way to end. I hope all of you had a wonderful afternoon or morning, wherever you may be. And hopefully that you enjoyed all that there was to see. Um, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning on our sunrise safari.